Welcome to the AVID webinar. It is conducted by Future Media Concept. My name is Tibor Spiegel, and let's start. The first thing you need to know is the version that I'm using is AVID Media Composer 2021.12. That's significant because there are some interface changes that came in 2019.6, which means 2019 in June, and ever since then, Avid is using the numerics of the year and the month as a versioning of its Media Composer family. So, how does one start a Media Composer project? You download your application, and the application is available in three different flavors. If you go on the Avid website, there is a selection of Media Composers, and the choices that you have available would be Media Composer first, Media Composer and Media Composer Ultimate as well as Media Composer Enterprise. The version that I'm using is Media Composer Ultimate. It, it contains a number of uh, plugin enhancements. So, how does the application start? Like in any other non-linear rating, in Media Composer you have an icon that represents the app. Left double clicking should open it up. Opens up, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to load the application because it sends out a message to all the drives and all the connected uh, eco elements. So when it opens up, it gives you this opening window. The opening window is very important because that's where you define and identify who you are, like a user. And this is where the user settings are going to be either activated or created brand new. When you create a brand new one, it's going to be always a default one. So the keyboard settings, the export, import, the timeline views, and things of that sort. The good thing about this user setting is that you can uh, save it, you can export it, and you can import it if you are traveling and you put it up on a USB flash or in the cloud. I select first the user setting, and then if you have a need to start a new project, the new project dropdown gives you a variety of choices. The choices that I am going to be picking from are all listed here. Ultra HD, 2K, 4K, 8K, 16, and they have high definition, two flavors, the full raster size 19 20 1080 and the 1287 20. we still deal with ntsc and pal if you want to customize it you actually can define what is going to be the frame rate as well what is the raster dimension generally in these united states we use the high definition 1080 p2997 which is locked down 19 20 1080 frame rate 2997 i do have some pre-cut projects that i recorded earlier so let's find where they are Left double clicking opens it up. Before I open it up, it actually is not a bad idea to look at it and see when was it created, uh, what is the raster size, what is the frame rate, what is the color space. So left double clicking or just selecting and clicking on the bottom right and open should open it up. When it opens up, it connects to the media. Is it linked or ingested? Uh, doesn't really matter, but it connects it. So this is what I had prepared for you guys. Let me show you the full screen. So I have a project that is containing a folder, and inside the folder I have a bin, and in that bin I have the four sequences that I will be using today for demonstration purposes. Now, the first one is very easy. It is a preset that you get when you uh, sign up for classes, and I just added an additional track of video, and we'll talk about how that track of video now contains the information that is uh, title. So let's start with the horizontal effects. In the horizontal effects, we understand that the transition that I see right now is a straight cut. And right away you noticed and you heard that the music seems to be very loud and you can actually see how it is very loud. It goes into distortion. So in order for me to adjust for the entire duration of that sequence, on the right side you have these icons that represents specific workspaces, the color workspace, the effects. I'm looking for the audio because in the audio I do have a fader, master fader, that can be manually brought down. You can also type in a number into the box where the green uh, colored uh, numerics show up. So type in minus 20, so I should be able to bring it down to minus 20 dB, which is a measurement for audio. 
and it's bearable for this webinar presentation. The reason why I am accessing this right now is I would like to show you a tool that is used in any other application, the trim tool. And in this case, the trim tool is going to be a live trimming. What I am looking for is if you listen to the music, you will identify there are beats. There. So you can identify there is a beat and the waveform identifies there is a beat there. So I would like to make sure that the first and the second shot are changing on that beat, meaning the beat that I am parking on. And in order for me to make it work, I have obviously different tools, but the tool I'm going to look for is now going to trim mode. The dual trim mode shows me the last trim of the outgoing, the first trim of the incoming source side, record side. And the trimmer can be used manually by dragging it either left or right. So I can actually find where that location is. But that to me is really not the fastest way. The fastest way for me would be going into the trim mode, which is U. Okay. You can also lasso it from left to right to transition. And using your J, K, or L buttons to move around. J moves to the left. L moves to the right. And K pauses. So if I have a need to get the sound where the meeting point is holding down K and J, I'm going to scrub it. And I'm scrubbing exactly where the beat is. Double checking the audio, make sure that the volume is down where it needs to be. Done. So if I play it out, listen to it, please. And if I want to have that meeting of the cut on the second audio signal, go into trim mode. Instead of dragging it manually and trying to eyeball it, I can actually listen to the sound. <laughs> This is the fastest and easiest way of doing the trimming. Nobody has this. When I say nobody, I am specifically identifying that I am trimming live and the trim takes and you can hear and see it. So in this scenario, I am very, very certain that if you just hear, that's it, I can stop at the beat. Very, very good tool. And it's a live dynamic. When I said JKL, I meant to open up the keyboard settings. And in the keyboard settings, I identify that the J is playing reverse. K pauses, L moves forward. Okay, now let's just move along because this is a webinar where I have specific things to cover. So let's say that we agreed on that the meeting point, the cut point is where I defined it. Watch it and listen to it. So it changes on the beat. Now, when you have a scenario that is like this, a straight cut from outgoing shot to incoming shot, on occasion you want to soften it up. And there are multiple ways of softening. One way of the softening is park in the vicinity where the transition is. Say hello to your quick transition. And in the quick transition, open up the possibilities. The possibilities that I have available are dissolve, film dissolve, fade, fade to color, fade from color, dip to color, and 3D depth transition. Right now, I'm going to use the dissolve and use a specific duration. By default, you'll notice that I am defaulted to 24 frames. That suggests that I'm getting a one-second transition, which translates to 24 because the project is 24. Therefore, you want to change it, type in 12, so now you have six frames before, six frames after. This transition can obviously be mo moved, and if you move it, you can start earlier, later. You can also stretch it out manually customizing it or just make it proper center on the cut do 12 frames so now i have six and six so this is a nice transition it may or may not fit the style of the editing so it actually is a nice transition the cool thing here before i go any further is that if i want to have multiple transitions in the timeline selecting a blanket which i did from mark in mark out i is mark in o is mark out Okay, so I have a blanket put on that video, and you see that the blanket covers a whole variety of these cuts. So if I go back to the quick transition, 
in the quick transition there is a additional element showing up applying to all transitions therefore i can apply the same dissolve to all transitions that are under the blanket the dissolve didn't seem to be dynamic enough for me so i'm going to switch it over to a dip to color dip to color by default is going to be a dip to black a 7.5 black or a 16 digital black and if i add it it will add to all of the transitions that dip to black let's check it out full screen well it may not be exciting but you understand the concept that you're applying the same transition in that blanket area if you want to delete any of the individual transitions you can park in the vicinity hit the remove effect the multiple way of doing that would be going into a effect mode highlight the transition or transitions that you want to get rid of in this case i'm using them non-consecutively and use either the delete button or the remove effect if you want to get additional ones highlight two of them so this is the way to get rid of the effects now the point i am looking to demonstrate is if i'm working in a scenario where i have a specific dip to color and the dip to color defaults to black as we said in order for me to change that color i have multiple choices one of them is clearly go into the effect editor effect mode and there's two different ways of doing that the floating effect the dialog box opens up and identifies it's a dip to color and it tells me what is the color that i dipped to double clicking on that black color i can actually change it to in this case i'm going to change it to white so now i have a dip to white if you play it you can see it the question is how do you benefit from it and how do you make it available for every other transition two different ways of going about it bottom left hand corner i'm going to open up a brand new bin and that bin is going to be called effects template now this effects template opens up and if i go back to the effects editor i can grab that dip to color which in this case is dip to white grab the icon put it into the bin and now i have it saved as a template essentially i can apply it individually by dragging to the transition or i can highlight a transition holding option select the rest of them consecutively so now they are all ready to be dipped to color white double click now everybody is dipped to white but this took a little bit more than necessary essentially you had to go into effect mode you have to select the transitions and you have to dip on the color now in this case the color is not dip to color it's dip to white so let's rename it right away while we are here now if you check the dips they are actually white there we go this is all time consuming so i'm going to take them off going into the effect mode select one of the transitions can i highlight all of them yeah holding down option select all of them and either hit delete or delete them by using the remove effect icon now this is where things get really really nice if you rename the fx template bin to quick specifically quick transitions plural so that bin is now called quick transitions see what happens when you add the mark in and mark out on a timeline and you open up your old friend the quick transition other than the defaults that are selected available now you have the dip to white this dip to white only shows up because now you have that bin called quick transition and the computer recognizes it so i'm going to have all of those transitions dip to white yeah there we go so instead of 12 that was the default i will make them eight so they look a little bit faster and when i add them i don't need to render them that's where they are let's look at it full screen there we go it's much more dynamic point is that you have now a bin that is transferable it is uh, savable movable copyable and you can use it in both platforms windows and mac now that's when you have a horizontal transition let's just do a different horizontal transition to prove a point that we can come up with some interesting stuff so park in the vicinity of a transition and instead of applying whatever i had there take that off particular 
remove effect and let's say hello into the and let's go into the upper left hand where the effect palette has a number of these wipes number of these conceals matrix wipe peels are good pushes are good so let's put one of the pushes the left to right push drag in the left to right put it onto the transition and now you have a specific left to right notice that the left to right is a specific duration that is using the guidance of what the original effect was let me demonstrate the point if I had a 12 frame transition at a junction where I brought an existing the previous effects duration decides what the next effect is going to be on it if I don't have an effect at the transition point it will be always one second look at the timing this is one second this is much less how long is it no idea let's check it out there we go identifies it as a six frame nice okay so now we can understand and we can identify that yes when you have a transition you can always manipulate the duration of it and there is two different ways of doing that one of them is obviously what i'm showing going to the effects and in the duration bottom i can type in a number let's say make it 12. so now i can see how it's making it longer maybe like a 20. see how it changes okay and if i go back to let's say 12 there we go and because i choose to have it in the set up as a center on a cut it will center let's say 24. so you can see how the icon changes now that's one way of doing that and that is a uh, very practical and very specific because you have a duration that is based on the understanding of frames how do you eyeball it go into the timeline zoom into the timeline and in a timeline there is a grabber that allows me to grab the transition manipulation so I can actually manually make it shorter or longer when I say longer I should go the other direction so make it longer and if I hold down option I proportionately change them now this is done eyeballing which means that I define how long the transition is going to be just by looking at or counting the frames when I say counting the frames this is actually a cool way of counting the frames do you see I'm zoomed in one two three four five six seven eight okay so the transition line the diagonal line identifies how long it is one two three four five six seven eight so that's an eight frame transition if you don't trust it and you want to double check it go back into the effect editor tells me yeah it is eight with this now I would like to have that left to right be part of the setup in the quick transition so I can copy that left to right there we go it's in there so now if I need to have a cleaning when I say cleaning let me clean up all these transitions go into the effect hold down option lasso everybody from left to right and tell them to disappear so last element of this horizontal because I need to move along park before and after a transition go back to your friend the quick transition drop down and now you have the dip to white as well as the left to right so let's do left to right how long well make it let's say instead of eight frames make it 10 frames at ah, 12. even numbers are the ones that computer likes apply to all transitions there we go so if I play it watch it please and if you go through the time line you will see those those transitions all the same if you want to have a different transition between let's say three four and five you can still use manually highlight three four and five and double click on the dip to white so now those three will be dip to white let's see if I'm correct yeah pushes dips and so on to clean it out all go back to the effect editor pick one of the transitions hold an option lasso everybody and hit delete or as we have been using it in earlier exercise remove effects the next family of effects in media composer is known as the segment effect so here is a number of segment effects I'm going to introduce to you the segment is a clip or multiple clips so if this is a clip that I would like to change that is a segment if I want to have three of them I can identify them as a segment and they can be either segment by the clip definition duration beginning ending or I can in and out it in this scenario I'm going to go with the premise that three shots one 
two, three, will be changed in such a way that in the effects family, I will choose a image and I'm gonna have them flip all three of them. Double click, all three of the shots are now upside down. Silly, but a very drastic and very visible change. The question is, can you do that for multiple ones? Yes, you can do them non-consecutive, holding down shift, and the ones that are selected, double clicking, let's say, on a flip. Yeah, flip is a very drastic one, very visible. So you can actually see how shots. Now, the interesting thing is that this is applied to each and every one of them. So if I apply a color effect to one of the shots, let's say apply a color effect, and the color effect obviously needs to be adjusted because it's not a preset, it's not a lot, it's not a color correction. So if you want to make the color changes, you actually open up the effect editor and let's say push the red a little bit, take away the blue, and maybe take the saturation down. So now you have an effect called sepia tone. If you want to save it into the bin, that is the quick transitions or create a brand new bin, it's totally up to you. I'm just going to save it into the quick transitions. The question is how do you copy and paste? You remember earlier today that we had an effect in a bin and we physically can drag it. We can also select a segment or segments and double click and we can grab them. And this is my custom sepia tone. So how do you get rid of them? Well, the same way you got rid of things when you were using the remove effect. As long as you understand that you have selected all the clips segments that contain an effect, you can take them off, it comes off. Here comes the cool one. If you select one, in this case, a whole track, so all the clips are selected on that track, and instead of double clicking and adding the effect to each of them, Command Z undo, you hold down Option, Alt on the Windows, and you double click on it. Now you put a blanket over all the shots, which means that the entire story is now sepia tone. Where did the clips disappear? Well, they did not, they are behind Double click on it, they are behind, uh-huh. So if you select an in-out point and you wanna make sure that you have all the clips that you highlighted in and out, I-O, marking, I-O, affected, highlight the into out area, which is something we did earlier, we select a blanket. And in order for me to make it uh, dip to white, go into the quick transitions, activate the dip to white, dip to white, there we go. The transition is going to be 12 frames, and if I apply to all of them, there we go. One of them is missing, does not have enough footage, so we will gonna resize it, which means that the effect will be shorter. And if I did my job right and everything works right, when you play it out full screen, you will notice that the dips are not white. They are sepia tone, aha, uh -huh, because the sepia tone is on top of the white, so that's why it is not changed over to sepia tone. This concept is introducing you to the nesting. So let's just clear this one out because I need to make sure that you understand the layering technique. So before we go advanced, I'll take the color effect of the entire timeline. I'll clear out all the in and outs. I have no effects on it. Okay. And if I wanna make sure that everything is clean, which is what I'm looking for, make sure that there is no effects left over that I had. Now we're back to default. In the default scenario, I remember that if I drag a effect, like a color effect, onto a segment, that is the one that is being affected. I also know that if I hold down multiple segments and I double click on them, all five of them in this case get it, or if I wanna hold down option and double click, the blanket is now put on those five. So this is very simple. It is sometimes necessary to have an ability to turn the effect on and off. So for that reason, I'm going to add one more track, and I'm going to show you how Avid deals with putting the effect on the entire show. Just grab and put that color effect on top, and that's it. The entire show is now sepia tone. So now you have a filter on video track too that can be turned off and turned back on. To make this interesting, I'm going to shrink the tracks a little bit holding down option. There we go, add another video track. And in this scenario, I'm gonna look for and add the mask on top of everybody. So now I have two effects, the original, the sepia tone, and I have a mask. And the mask is going to be a very specific one. I'm gonna give you a letterbox, which is going to be, here's the letterbox, make it, there we go, get daddy stock logo off. And to make it more interesting, I will 
change the background color to like deep blue. When I say background, I'm referring to that actual mask. If the mask is to be changed, you know how to do that. Well, if you don't, that's why I'm happy to show it to you. So I'm going to keyframe it. At the beginning, it's going to be blue. By the time I reach the midpoint, I'm going to change it to, let's say, a lighter green. By the time I reach the two-third portion, I'm going to change it to red. And the ending is going to be white. So by the time I reach the end, it's going to be add a keyframe and make it white. So now timing, if you look at it, look at it full screen, is changing the mask, which is on top of everybody. And the cool thing here is that you can turn that information off. You can select only one of them, just the mask, but not the sepia tone. So you can turn on and off tracks. And this is really going along with the concept of layering. Layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, 2, and 1. There's one segment effect that I like a lot, and you guys will hopefully enjoy it. I'm going to delete the two video tracks and say hello to the timing. The timing is something that I really, really loved when it was introduced first time, but now I love it more because it's a real-time effect. The upper left-hand area, you have the Time Warp family, and you can notice that all the Time Warp family members are real time. There's a green dot next to them and they are suggesting that they are conditional real time. It essentially means that if the system can play it, it will play it. If your system can play four of those, it will play them for real time. If the system can only play two, two of them have to be rendered. Anyway, so let's put a time warp on the shot that is going to be the trick shot for us. We're going to stop the guy in the middle, in the air, by saying that we're going to freeze the frame. So. In the time warp, we're going to add a keyframe. And we want to make sure the duration between the beginning and by the time we reach the keyframe where he needs to be frozen in the air is going to be dynamically set up as interpolation shelf, which means that it drops down instantly to zero. If you're not able to grab that zero, you should be able to highlight the keyframe and just type in zero, and it should park on the zero line. Anyway, so now the picture is frozen. Check it real time. Okay, it's frozen. I'm going to hold it frozen for a little bit, and then I'm going to go reverse. Because I already set up the interpolation to be shelf, that means that it will be jump from location, jump from location, jump from location. When I say location, I'm referring to keyframes. So the third keyframe is going to be minus 100, and that will go backwards. Let's see. All right, so you got the concept. You also have an ability to have a freeze frame, like for example in this next shot, I would like to freeze a frame, and the frame that I'm going to use is when the guy lands on this concrete. Notice that the shot begins with a guy walking and then the guy jumping. Essentially, this is the frame I want to freeze. If I believe that dragging the freeze frame, which in this case is the icon here, freezes the frame on that shot, I'm going to be disappointed because it doesn't freeze the frame that I parked on. It freezes the first frame of the clip. So in order for me to benefit from it, I'm not going to use the freeze frame. I'm going to use the time warp. Activate the time warp effect mode. Define where the freeze frame is going to be with the keyframe. Add an anchor point, which means that I am not starting to play from the beginning. The blue anchor, I'm playing it from where I define that the playing should be, and define that the first frame is not going to be played. I'm not playing the first footage. So I'm going to play only from the point where the guy lands. And because it is now 100, bring it down to zero should give you the freeze frame of that specific one. And for the entire duration. If that's useful, use it. Here's the last one. I will have the guy come down and he's going to not just jump through that fence or that um, opening, he's going to end up in the park, okay? In order for me to accomplish that, putting the time warp on. Accelerate it, and here's an interesting thing. I have no idea if I have additional footage. When I see additional footage, I need to understand that when I park on it, which in this case is going to be match frame, I need to know if there is enough footage where he jumps it and ends up in a park. Oh, yes, he does. So he actually ends up in a park. 
So the shot begins with him dropping down. And right now, because I matched it, when I say match frame, I matched it, I know that I am in the same frame, so I have tons of footage to accelerate. So if I have a duration that is a specific duration, I can double it, triple it by using my friend uh, accelerator. So I'm going to bring it up to, let's say, 300%, typing in 300. So I'm going three times speed, so when he drops down, watch how he plays out. Real time. Ah, that's what happened. So because we had footage, we were able to do that. If I accelerate it to a level that is maybe more than 300 in this case, let's bring it up to, let's say, 500. 500, five times speed. Why does the picture stop? Look at the timeline. The timeline requires that I play it out, but because I ran out of frames, it keeps the last frame until the next edit point comes in. Very simple, very logical. We deal with this in Media Composer 110 a lot, so if you take any classes with us, we deal with this in detail. I need to move along. Clear it, my source monitor. Clear my record monitor, and here is the last element. This is gonna be nesting that I have set up for you guys, and this is gonna be layers, layers nesting. The layer nesting is based on the principle of what is on top, what is below, generally. I'm going to add three more tracks. One, two, three. I'm going to duplicate some of the tracks and I'm going to have a stack. So layer one, holding down segment mode, option, alt and shift. I'm duplicating that shot, duplicating shots and duplicating them. I'm going to line them up. Layer one, layer two, layer three. So I have layer one, layer two one, layer three two one, and layer four three two one. In order for me to see all of these elements together, I highlight the two, three, four, go into the family of effects called blend and double click on the picture in picture. So all three of these guys get the picture in picture. They all end up in the center. So let's look at two and one. Two and one suggests that I have a layer that is the background and the foreground is the guy running hallway. So he's quarter size. Now, in order for me to make sense out of it, I'm going to go quickly into Effect Editor and add a border to the shot that is uh, on video two. Therefore, border, open it up, make it red. Red makes sense because I'm going to use the three color thing. So red, I don't see it. Here's the red. Well, it's not really red. It's more pinkish red. So maybe this is more red. So now it's red. The second one I like to move away, but I see it covers the background, so I have to physically maybe drag it, there we go, and add a different border to this guy. That's gonna be RGB green. Make it green. I don't see it because I did not decide. There we go, there is the green. And the third layer, which is gonna be moved to the upper right-hand corner, I'm gonna drag it in upper right-hand corner, and that layer is going to be a blue. Double-click makes it blue. Now, here's the premise and here's the instruction. They want the blue picture in picture to be blue video. They want to have the green green and the red red. So if I define that the blue is going to be blue, guess what? You remember I talked about the color in the family of the image. So holding down option, dragging the color effect and put it onto the top layer and say, hey, I'm going to make it blue. When I have two effects, now the second effect is being animated and the blue is going to be pushed and I'm pushing the blue. I'm taking away the red, and I'm taking actually even the saturation. So the entire show is going to be bluish. Well, if it's not bluish enough, I add a little bit of green and definitely take off the red. But notice that the blue is dominating everybody. Wait a minute. I did not want to have everything blue. I just wanted to have the top blue. So this is where the nesting comes in. You have to understand that the principle of layering is based on what is on the top dominates above that. But if the top has two layers, meaning I have the picture here, and the picture in picture makes it smaller, so that's the layer. If I add the color effect, not on the top, but inside onto the clip, that's going to be the way to go about it. So let's see if I did my job properly. Make it blue. Just go crazy. Go blue. Take away the red. Take away the green. And it's like, do. obviously, it's not practical it's a very drastic but for demonstration purposes you understand it so the way to go about putting the red inside the red fine which is the layer no idea hold down command you solo the track so you can know 
which is the one that you're manipulating. So if I'm going on to the bottom one, that's the red one, open up the nest, drag the color onto the shot, go into the effects editor, push the red, push the red, and the red now is red. Take away some of the green, ring makes it yellowish, and blue makes it more cyanish, magentish, so now I have it red. Close it, what happened to the rest of the guys? Well, there we go. So now blue is blue, red is red, green is gonna be green, which is the green? Let's find out. Soloing it would be a good idea. No, 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 this is the one. Oh, there we go. Double click, open it up, grab the color effect, put it inside, identify that it's gonna be green, push the green, take the red off, maybe leave some blue in it if you want to, but I'll just take it off just for demonstration purposes. And when I'm done, show the three layers. There they are. Playing them real time is not a bad idea. Testing it out, see if the system can handle it. And one of them is longer than the other ones. So now you understand the concept of nesting. And when you're done with the show, generally what you would do is distribute it. Now, if you're working in an Avid environment, this is on a server. So this can go on the air. They put a timing on it and the server identifies and registers and schedules it for distribution. If you are a solo, meaning the independent source editor, and you want to send it out to someone for distribution, monetizing it, right click, open up the export tool. And in the export tool, you have some presets. If you want to customize it, you can customize the option. You can send it out as A. These are the file possibilities. MOV, very popular. Avid does not support it anymore. It's actually Apple doesn't support it anymore. So I probably recommend maybe try the MPEG-4. And there is obviously sizes and aspect ratios and stretching it and whatever, you know, options you have. What's the maximum I can set it out? Whoa, 16K, it would blow it up, pixelate. Anyways, so when you are done, you can save it and you can render it and put it out and that's your distribution. Uh, the webinar is pretty much done. I hope that you got something out of this. My first sequence was obviously the one identifying who I am, who we are and what was this webinar about. Then we had the horizontal effects where we added a whole bunch of transitions. Then we talked about the segment concept where we manipulate and really explore the timing thing, which I love a lot. The last one was the layering, and I hope you had a good time. And just to show gratitude to the supporters, here are our sponsors, Ceremonic and Dell. So if you take any classes with Future Media Concept, you will get some discounts with them. Thank you very much for attending. The best to you, and good luck.